What does the cross of Jesus mean? It's more than so. Hello friends, greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Brother Anthony Roberts and I represent the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We are happy to welcome you to viewing our weekly telecast of the program Moments with Truth here on Tobago Inspirational Network Channel 137. It's our prayer that as you view this program that you will receive a blessing from the Lord and also from His Word. At the close of the broadcast, you will see a list of our churches and the various meetings, and you are welcome to attend at any time. We trust that you will receive a blessing as you come. You can also contact us on momentswithtruth at yahoo.com. Remember that Jesus loves you, that he died for you, that he's coming again very soon. Are you ready to meet him? I say a hearty good morning to you, our viewing audience, as I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome you to Moments with Truth, a presentation of the Gospel Hall Churches in Tobago. My name is Lawrence Haggard, and I will be your presenter to, for today. We would like to begin at this time with a word of prayer as we acknowledge God's presence in our midst. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we give glory to your great name, that you are the God of creation, the one in whom we live and move and have our beings. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies granted unto us for yet another day, and for this another opportunity to share your word. We pray that as we look into your word, that we will be instructed and enabled by your grace to walk in your fear. We pray for all in our viewing audience that, Lord, you will meet them at the point of need. You will touch lives, you will touch homes and families. Lord, you will touch even this nation. And your glory will be revealed as we present Jesus Christ the truth. Be pleased then to give such help as is needed and grant that by the power of your spirit, your word will go forth to bless others through Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning, we would like to have a reading from 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. Verse 15 reads as follows. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Our theme for today's presentation is the truth that everyone should know. People all over are concerned about truth. As human beings, we are always concerned about truth in matters that concerns us. As we think of our nation at this time, there are a number of issues in the public domain about which people are seeking truth. There are a number of matters before the courts, and people are concerned about what is the truth in the matter. We think of um, a number of issues that uh, would have affected our nations most recently. And we are all concerned about the spate of murders that have been taking place in our twin island, Trinidad and Tobago. And more recently, right here in Tobago, we think of the very tragic loss 
of an outstanding member of the community. And people are concerned about truth. What happened? Who was responsible? Why did it happen? We think even on the international scene, many today are concerned about the truth concerning the missing um, aircraft. Uh, many are wondering what actually happened. And so people are concerned about truth. Interestingly, even when people themselves may not tell the truth, they would want the truth be told to them. And this morning, we want to focus for a while on this verse of scripture and draw out from it a few principles that helps us to understand some vital truths that are important. Truths, as I have said, that everyone should know. The Apostle Paul, who is the writer of this epistle, uh, penned these words, and they are very important for our consideration. I repeat the verse again. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. When we examine this verse, we find several things that are of importance. To help us understand this verse, I would like to identify a number of key points, each beginning with the letter P. Consider for a while with me then the pronouncement, the statement itself is an authoritative declaration or a pronouncement that came from the lips and from the pen of the Apostle Paul. Actually, it is a pronouncement uh, declared in 25 words. And it is very pointed and very plain and indeed very important for our consideration in as much as it highlights truth that everyone should know. As we think about this pronouncement, I repeat it. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. We think of the preamble to this pronouncement. The Apostle Paul would declare, this is a faithful saying, meaning that it is trustworthy. It is true. It is reliable. And it is also a saying that everyone should accept. So he says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. There is something universal about this that men of every nation, over every time period, of every creed and race, of every status in life, men can and should respond to the truth presented in this verse. And in as much as truth is important to us, we should indeed give heed to what is declared in this verse. Let us examine further some other issues that surface in this verse. We have already said that in the preamble, we have here a faithful saying, a true saying, a trustworthy saying. Interestingly, there are many sayings that we have day by day in our nation and in the nations of the world that are not true, that are not reliable, that are not trustworthy. Sadly, we find that today, many of those who are in positions of authority and responsibility are saying things that are not reliable that are not trustworthy, and that indeed, as we say in local parlance, we need to take with a grain of salt. But here is a saying that is trustworthy. Here is a saying that is reliable. Here is a saying that should be accepted by all. And why is this so? It is because it speaks about the truth who is Jesus himself. The Bible tells us that Jesus is truth personified. We think of Pilate, the judge, as he stood in his judgment hall, Jesus before him in that final judgment before his crucifixion. And when Jesus declared that he had come to be a witness of the truth, Pilate asked the question, what is truth? He was staring truth in his face and was asking that question, what is truth? But Jesus is truth indeed. He himself declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Bible tells us concerning the coming of Jesus that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So what is this truth that everyone should know? Let's consider a few high points in this verse. It tells us this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus, that is the person, came into the world, that is the place, to save sinners, that is the purpose. And the apostle concludes, of which I am chief, this tells us of the possibility. Let us examine each one of these uh, for a moment as we continue. This is a faithful saying, a true saying, a valid saying, a trustworthy saying, a reliable saying, and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus, this is the person, this is the one of, uh, that the Bible speaks of. This is the one that is clearly declared in John 3, 16, which tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus himself is the subject, the grand theme of the Bible. The Bible tells us that all the books of the Bible, the law and the prophets, they spoke of him. And the New Testament testifies concerning the life and ministry of Jesus, the truth. And the final book of the Bible, the book of the Revelation, is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the truth. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, in the prophecies Isaiah spoke saying, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. There Isaiah, some uh, 700 years or so before the birth of Jesus Christ, prophesied concerning the coming of Jesus Christ. And when we think of that verse, we understand, unto us a child is born. This speaks of the incarnation. Jesus, the truth, taking upon himself human form, coming in the likeness of human flesh, that he might become a savior for us. So a child is born, but unto us a son is given. The word of God tells us that Jesus is eternal deity, the eternal son of God. And it tells us further in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. When we think of Jesus, the one of whom uh, Paul speaks when he declares his faithful saying, when we think of the names as articulated by Isaiah, the Bible tells us his name shall be called Wonderful. This tells us that Jesus as the truth can make wonderful those unhappy and unpleasant and distasteful things that so often form a part of our lives. As wonderful, he can take care of the drudgery of our lives. And friends of ours, I do not know what you are going through, what experiences you are faced with right now, but I want you to know that Jesus makes the difference. And when we invite him in our, into our lives, when we trust him as our Lord and Savior, he can make even the unpleasant experiences of our lives wonderful. It tells us also, his name shall be called Counselor. This tells us that he can take care of the decisions of our lives. And oftentimes we have many important decisions to make. And as we learn to trust Jesus, the Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So as wonderful, he can help with the decisions of life. The Bible tells us also, his name shall be called uh, the mighty God. This tells us that he can take care of the dimensions of our lives. Whatever they might be, the past, the present, the future, Jesus Christ is able to take care of those issues of our lives because he is the mighty God. And it tells us that he is the Prince of Peace. Oh, we think of the disturbances of life, the many things that cause fear and anxiety. But in the midst of them, we can take our cares to Jesus. We can trust in him. And in the midst of them, we find that he gives us peace. And yes, he is the everlasting father. He can take care of all the dimensions of life. As already mentioned, the past, the present, and the future. Yes, our sins, which might be many, he can take care of them, and he alone can take care of the past. And the present circumstances that we grapple with, he can take care of them. And the future which might be uncertain, 
because of whom he is as the everlasting father, he can take care of all the dimensions of our lives. But we also wish to think of Jesus coming into the world, a faithful saying worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world. That is the place. How we thank God that Jesus came into the world of humanity. He came into your experience and mine. He came into this physical world as already referred to in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. And we need to know that the God of heaven, the God in whose hands we are, the God who made us, he loves us. And God's love was demonstrated by giving Jesus Christ who came into this world to die for us so that he identified with us. He took upon himself human flesh. We think of John beholding him as recorded in John's gospel, chapter 1, verse 29. And again in verse 35, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus came into our world, our human existence, our human experience. And friends of ours, this morning I wish to tell you, wherever you are, whatever your circumstances might be, whatever the problems, and for sure I know that we live in very stressful times and very difficult times, and so often our lives are overwhelmed with problems and difficulties, problems in the family, problems in the marriage, problems in the health, problems in the finances, problems that have to do with security, problems that have to do with being concerned about the future, which so often is uncertain. But in the midst of this, I want you to know, friends of ours, that Jesus draws near and he desires to be a part of your world. Not only did he become a part of the physical world, but he delights in becoming a part of our personal world, that he might bring change and transformation that he might bring healing and deliverance, that he might grant help, that he might be a blessing. Yes, Jesus came into the world, as the verse tells us. And then we think of the other thought in that verse. It tells us to save sinners. This identifies the purpose for which he came. How thankful we should be that there is one who came into the world, who came into our world to save sinners. As we look around in our world today, we are often perplexed by what we see taking place. We are often concerned and sometimes burdened and overwhelmed and sometimes afraid. And friends of ours, as we look around, we realize that sometimes there seem to be more questions than answers. And when we look at the rising uh, murder rate, the spiraling crime rate in our society and in our twin nation of Trinidad and Tobago, we are very concerned. And we hear some saying, what we need is better policing and better equipment. And I do agree that there is indeed a need for such. But friends of ours, I want you to say, to understand that better policing and better equipment alone will not solve crimes, will not solve the murders that we continue to grapple with. We need to understand that what our world needs is a savior. What our world needs is transformation and change from the inside out. Yes, we need better education. And we realize that in recent times we have had the upsurge of bullying in our schools and fights among our children and our students in schools. And the Minister of Education and the Ministry, of course, is seeking to do all that they can and taking measures that it is hoped will have a positive effect. And indeed, this is important. But again, we need to appreciate that not only do we need to have better education, not only do we need to have the support services intervening into the lives and experiences of the young, but what young people need is Jesus. What our world need is a savior. And this is so because of the problem of sin. We need to understand that all the problems that men face, they face these problems because of the root cause, sin. And so if men are to address and find solutions to the problems that they are grappling with, we must not only look for social solutions or psychological solutions or political solutions or financial solutions. We need above all to look for spiritual solutions. Salvation is the answer. 
And our text tells us that Christ Jesus, the person, came into the world, the place, to save sinners. This is why Jesus Christ came. And friends of ours, we need to understand that what men and women need is a Savior. It is a Savior whose salvation can touch life and change from the inside out. Oh, how often we think that sometimes in our attempt to solve problems, we may seek to solve them by addressing the external issues, ex uh, addressing the, the fallout or the outcome of the problems. But friends of ours, my viewing audience, we need to understand that what is most critical is being able to attack the problem at the source and the source of man's problem, the source of the moral breakdown in our society, the source of the problems in the home and the family, the source of the violence and the crime and the bullying, the source of the corruption in high places. We need to understand the root cause is sin and what men need is a savior. Yes, we can and should do all that we can to change society and to change attitudes and to change behaviors. But true and lasting change begins on the inside and it happens when Jesus Christ comes into our life. So the Bible says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What our society need is Jesus. What men and women need is Jesus. What our young people need is Jesus. What the older folks need is Jesus. Jesus as the Savior. And the last thought tells us here, the apostle says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus, again the person, came into the world, the place, to save sinners the purpose, and he concludes by saying, of which I am chief. This tells us of the possibility. If Paul accounted himself to be the chief of sinners and he was saved, then anyone else can be saved. This is truth that everyone needs to know, that there is a savior and his name is Jesus. Jesus did not just come to give us an example or to show us a better way. Jesus did not just come into this world that we might have another way. Let us understand, Jesus came into this world that we might know the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. And while we would seek to uh, acquire uh, information or knowledge about many things in this world that indeed might be important, here is knowledge that we need to have. Here is truth that all men need to have. The old song tells us everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And this morning I'm saying that Trinidad and Tobago and the world at large needs to know who Jesus is. He is the savior of the world, especially of them that believe. And so as I conclude this morning's presentation, I present to you again the text that we have quoted so many times already this morning. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And the apostle Paul said, of whom I am chief. And the chief of sinners was saved. So friends of ours, you can be saved if you do not know Jesus and how Jesus loves you. Calvary is a demonstration of the love of God for all mankind and the love of Jesus for all mankind. He went to Calvary's cross where he died in your place and mine, where he died as your sacrifice in mine, where he became a substitute. The Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And a man could not die for himself because he was guilty of sin. And a man could not die for another man because it needed an immaculate man and an innocent man to die for men. And so a plant would not suffice because God said the soul that sinneth it shall die. So it needed a man and an animal would not have sufficed. And Jesus came and he died for you. He died for me. He died in our place. And this morning we want you to know that he who died rose triumphantly from the dead. He is alive as a savior and he is ready, willing and able to save you just where you are. 
in your living room, just where you are, as you pass by and you view this telecast, whoever you might be, wherever you might be, Jesus says, and this morning, he wants to save you. We trust that just where you are, you will acknowledge your need of a savior, acknowledge that Jesus is the Lord and savior, and trust him. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Trust him now, and he will wonderfully save you. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we give thanks for your word that went forth this morning and for all those who viewed it on this telecast. And we pray that you will be glorified in touching lives and homes and families in bringing blessing and healing and transformation and deliverance and above all salvation to those who are yet in their sins. Receive our thanks as we give glory to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.